She's been called a poet with a knife. She's a biologist with a mission to fight a serial killer head on. That killer is cancer, and she's a cancer crusader who's not giving up. Here's our Alison Vushnik. <laughs> If you want a chance to play a hero, here it is. This is a really difficult problem that we're facing. This is our time. This is the moment for us. This is Sandra Steingraber, and she's at war. It's killing our children and it's killing the planet, and it has to stop. This is her enemy, an enemy, she says, that strikes and kills by the hundreds of thousands every year. Sandra is on a crusade to stop that killer. Everywhere the scientist goes, packed auditoriums, bookstores, schools, even the subject of a documentary, she hears stories like this. We lost our four-year-old daughter to brain tumor. And everyone asking the same question. The first question you ask on day one is why. Sandra isn't here to find a cure or a new treatment for a deadly disease. If we all work together in concert, become a self-fulfilling prophecy. May it be so. She's here to stop the cause of cancer. And that cause, she says, are the poisons in our air, water, and food that have a toxic grip on our communities. Chemicals that she says are the real enemy. Cancer is a waste of time, and that's the best thing you can say about it. Cancer is a serial killer. An unlikely hero, the soft-spoken biologist and a trained poet, was content in the lab until the day she was diagnosed with bladder cancer at 20. But she wasn't alone. One by one, the disease struck her family, her mother, aunt, uncles, cousins, all ravaged by cancer. But the punchline to my story is that I'm adopted. And that fact sent this scientist off on a search to figure out what caused her own cancer. I learned it's a quintessential environmental cancer. So we actually had more data on the environmental links to bladder cancer than almost any other kind of cancer, with data going back 100 years. The more she researched, the clearer the links she saw between chemicals and a shockingly long list of cancers. Bladder cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, brain cancer, pancreatic cancer, cancer It liver, just goes on leukemia. and on. There are nearly 80,000 chemicals on the North American market. And Sandra says those chemicals are treated as innocent until proven guilty. Most never tested by regulators. It comes as a shock to most people that only about 2% of chemicals have ever been tested. There is no requirement that chemicals be tested before they're allowed to be sold. And we've been buying and applying those chemicals for decades. This one, DDT, was one of the first developed as a modern insecticide in the Second World War. After the war, DDT, considered safe and effective, was used everywhere, part of a new generation of powerful chemicals meant to improve our lives. More than two billion pounds of insecticides alone are manufactured every year in the United States and Canada. But even back then, there were warnings. This one from a Canadian government film. Some of the earlier chemicals threatened the very lives of those who applied them. It is vital for farmers to understand the precise effects of their chemical weapons. Then in 1962, the environmental movement exploded with this scientist, Rachel Carson and her book, Silent Spring. She sounded the first big alarm that pesticides were contaminating our soil, food and water. Can anyone believe it is possible to lay down such a barrage of poisons on the surface of the earth without making it unfit for all life? Back then, like now, many tried to dismiss the warnings that chemicals were making us sick. The major claims in Miss Rachel Carson's book, Silent Spring, are gross distortions of the actual facts, completely unsupported by scientific experimental evidence. But Sandra believes it. Carson's work is what inspires her. But while Carson took on DDT and pesticides, 50 years later, Sandra is fighting a much longer list. Pesticides, lawn chemicals, herbicides, fungicides, certain toilet deodorizers, moth proofing agents. George Woodwell was one of the environmental pioneers who worked to get DDT banned. 
He's frustrated Sandra has to continue the battle, only now it's worse. It's a crime, no question. We have to clean up air, water, and land in various ways. Sure, people are dying from toxins now. Sandra points out that there are thousands of toxins released in large quantity into the general environment. If we have to pursue each of them one by one, we're dead. And that's what drives Sandra, changing worldviews about chemicals, educating the public on causes, not cures, in a book and even a Canadian documentary called Living Downstream. My mentor and my friend, so I'd like to introduce Sandra Steingraber. Canadian filmmaker Shanda Shavanis' film about Sandra is now part of the educational arsenal. And I think that the truth is that no matter where we are, we're all exposed to chemicals. Sandra hopes radical change is what her children will inherit. And that's why she named her latest book, Raising Elijah, after her son. Taking action is exactly what the president's cancer panel in Washington called for last spring. The expert panel telling the president that the true burden of environmentally induced cancer has been grossly underestimated. Sandra couldn't agree more. We need to stop now and do something different. And I want to be um, part of that sol solution for change. And that solution, Sandra says, can only come when we change our chemical ways. So that toxic chemicals aren't part of the story, that we're, our economy is no longer dependent on, on their uses. Um, because when they are, kids die. Uh, and 20-year-olds uh, get bladder cancer. And that's just wrong.